In many cases, the conventional wisdom around how much or how little you should use all of the apps in your Microsoft 365 subscription comes down to what is your business need around those capabilities versus what are the financial objectives you've got in balancing the cost of your Microsoft 365 subscription against all of the other subscription products that you are using. Many organizations have a mixture. They might use Microsoft 365 as their core productivity suite and for email, but they might also use other products like Calendly or Monday.com or Salesforce or Zoom where it makes sense for them. There has been no right or wrong answer albeit there have been advocates on both sides of this debate. Now, Microsoft 365 Copilot is a new technology that Microsoft announced back in March that will infuse AI into Microsoft 365. And since then, Microsoft has shown us that it intends to roll out Copilot products across a lot of its suite. We're seeing Copilot for Dynamics 365, Copilot for Viva, Copilot for SharePoint was announced this week, Copilot in Power Apps. We're getting Copilot everywhere. And fundamental to this is the Copilot system, which was announced and explained at the time that Microsoft 365 Copilot was announced. On the front end, these technologies offer revolutionary capabilities from right inside your existing apps that are part of Microsoft 365, such as getting summaries of complex email threads, or helping turning documents into presentations, or branding and design support, and even capabilities to help you catch up on meetings you missed. Additionally, this new tool is going to bring a service called Business Chat, which will give you a Bing chat style capability across your business data. But that's what you'll see on the front end. I think what's more interesting is what's going to go on in the back end with this co-pilot system. And that's what I want to talk about a little today. I hope you're finding the content in this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll know immediately the next time I release a video. So this question of business data is probably more important right now than it ever has been with the emergence of these technologies. Because when you have a human sitting at a desk, it might be a frustration to have to move from disparate system to disparate system to do different parts of their job. But we know that all of the information that they're being exposed to resides somewhere in their brain and they're able to synthesize that out into whatever task it is they're doing. So we're talking about things that create some friction, they might create some inefficiency, and as an organization, you probably want to bring your systems closer together to reduce that, but it doesn't stop humans from being able to work, from being able to understand what it is you're asking them to do. But that isn't true with these AI technologies. Actually having data that your AI tech can see versus data that your AI tech can't see is like having your AI tech having to work with one arm tied behind its back. And the big differentiator for a product like Microsoft 365 Copilot versus just giving all of your employees access to something like ChatGPT is that context of business information. These are going to be responses that are based on your data, based on your context, um, based on something that is related to your business, as opposed to just being general, generalized responses. So while the headline text of this technology is surely going to be the infusion of AI into Microsoft 365, that's probably more to do with the fact that 2023 so far is the year of AI. But the truly important small print is that the reason why something like Microsoft 365 Copilot might be eminently more usable for the average user than the array of AI solutions already out there is the foundation of contextual data available to it. Now imagine you're in a situation where you need some help in your business and you hire someone, for example, to manage your calendar and your correspondence. And you have those things spread between different products, different ecosystems. You give that person a login to these different products and they do the job, they're able to help you. But then imagine that you never give them the login to your email, you only give them the login to your calendar. 
and then you wonder why nothing that's being requested of you in email is being actioned in your calendar in terms of the meetings you've got. Well, that would be very understandable because you haven't given them access to it. But if we take away the person and we think about the AI, we think about Microsoft 365 Copilot or these other AI technologies, then you can immediately see why the data that those technologies are sitting upon um, and how representative it is of what you're doing in your business is truly important. These technologies don't have the ability necessarily to just be given the login to two different products where your data resides is going to be truly important to their ability to work with that data and give you the answers or give you the solutions that you're looking for. So for companies who maintain a Microsoft 365 subscription for Outlook and Word and Excel, while they're really relying on Dropbox for their file storage or Zoom for their meeting recordings and Calendly for their scheduling or Monday.com for project planning, they might end up with a Microsoft 365 Copilot that tries to do the work you need, but is really hampered in doing so by not having access to all of the data that would be usable to give you the best answers. So I think that understanding the Copilot system is the essential part of understanding what capabilities Copilot technologies are going to give you within your business. And this co-pilot system really is a stool with three legs in the way that Microsoft has explained it. You've got all of your apps. So you've got your Word, you've got your Outlook, you've got your Excel, but you've also got Power Platform, you've got Power BI, you've got Dynamics, you've got SharePoint, you've got all the other areas where this has been announced as they're getting co-pilot-like products. And then you have the other aspect, which is your large language model, your, your GPT-4, like ChatGPT, that you're going to be sending stuff into and it's going to give you nicely formatted, readable responses back to you. But the other important aspect, and I think the most important aspect to this, is that before anything ever goes to your app from Microsoft over to the LLM, then what they're going to be doing is using the data that exists in the Microsoft Graph and other data that they've got to ground that, to give it context, to really relate it to your business and to improve the prompt so that you're getting back a better answer. Now, the Microsoft Graph is the layer of interconnections that exist around your data in Microsoft 365. It allows everything in Microsoft 365 to work seamlessly together. If you want to see your emails, they're available on the graph. If you want your files, those are there too. If you want to see your attendance at meetings, yeah. You want to see your security permissions, yes, it can do that too. If you want your tasks and your to-do items, yes, those are available, of course. If you want to see your relationships with colleagues, if you want to find out who your manager is, yes and yes. And this is a weight of information that not only offers individual data points, but when taken all together, provides an overall context of your work, your activities within your organization, and how your business operates. If you use Microsoft 365 and associated products for all or a lot of your work, then Microsoft Graph is going to have good visibility for you and your organization. But what happens if there are gaps? Now, I'm guessing that finding new ways to get your data into the graph and convincing you to use apps that can work with it is going to be a really important part of what Microsoft is trying to do with AI. Because the big differentiator for Microsoft, as I've said, is going to be the relevance of the results it can give you based on the amount of data that it's got. And there are newer technologies that Microsoft has rolled out relating to Graph and related to Search that can help with this. There's a product called Graph Connectors that enables tenant admins to expand the indexing available in the Graph to products that are outside Microsoft 365. And right now, that list of products is fairly limited and consists of ones that mainly would be used by big businesses like ServiceNow and Salesforce. But there's also a third party marketplace for connectors that's very similar to what you see for connectors for Power Automate, for example. 
and this literally allows you to expand the index of the Microsoft Graph beyond the walls of Microsoft 365. So it seems very likely, although this isn't confirmed at this point, that by expanding that index, you'll be giving Copilot, um, Copilot technologies generally, not just Microsoft 365 Copilot, access to more data, which will allow your prompts, your requests, what you're asking for it, to be grounded better, which will give you better results, more relevant results based on information from within your business. But it has to be said that graph connectors are not a small business product. Indexing is only included with Enterprise E5 or Viva Topics licenses, or to buy more index capacity separately starts at $1,000 a month. So outside of this more niche enterprise level capability to extend Microsoft Graph indexing, we already know that Microsoft 365 can interface with lots of different platforms, either natively from the third party platform side or with some Microsoft assisted intervention through something like Power Automate. When we're working with those more limited API capabilities, and often ones that are provided by third parties to smaller business focused products, it serves to remind us of the power that Microsoft provides us with, with its graph indexing, that provides 90% of what's inside Microsoft 365 to our fingertips to access or manipulate in apps almost instantly. And while we don't know yet exactly how these co-pilot technologies will work within individual tenants, I think it makes logical sense to suggest that the more coverage of your business activities is represented by the data available inside your Microsoft 365 tenant, the more beneficial Copilot may be when used by your team members. We know for sure that this access includes the information within your core graph index. And we don't know for sure, but we can probably guess that it'll include the data provided to the graph index by graph connectors. But beyond this, into other third-party apps or smaller business scenarios, the situation becomes more murky. And given that Microsoft 365 Copilot will likely have no way to know how representative the data it sees is of the overall activities of your business, organizations with their data spread across multiple ecosystems may need to be very careful with introducing some of the capabilities Copilot will offer. Imagine if Copilot is truly revolutionary to how many of us do work, and for a business that fully adopts Microsoft 365, it delivers an average of a 10% time saving or efficiency boost to knowledge workers. That boost will presumably be driven to some degree by the quality of the data Copilot relies upon. And so if we start to see results that can be measured in this way, we may also start to see variances based upon just how much of a different business's data is available for Copilot to reference. So with this in mind, are there reasonable things that we can do to prepare for Microsoft 365 Copilot and the various parts of the Copilot ecosystem while we continue to wait for more information? First, the most important thing is what not to do. Designing and developing solutions takes a lot of time and planning, and those that are well thought out invariably perform better than those delivered as a knee-jerk reaction. There's no emergency here, so no one should be radically altering long-term plans with urgency just to get ahead of something we lack very basic information on at this point. However, reviewing plans and making appropriate changes as what's on the horizon alters is a prudent and sensible aspect of ongoing change management. If your IT services are already spread over multiple ecosystems, then there are good reasons to routinely review the capabilities of Microsoft 365 to see if you can gain efficiency through using more of these tools. For for example, with the introduction of Teams Premium licenses a couple of months ago, Microsoft really upped its game when it came to webinars. See the link to this video below if you're interested. And I know this is one of the reasons why a lot of organizations would choose to use another product like Zoom over using Teams for those kinds of situations. Similarly, with big improvements in the Bookings app, and there's a link to this walkthrough also below, including the addition of virtual appointments, third-party services like Calendly might be less necessary for you. Increasing the overall adoption of Microsoft 365 can bring big benefits to any business. It can cost less overall, but also be less expensive and complex to manage. It can reduce your training needs, and it can promote efficiency by reducing how often your end users need to shift gear when moving from platform to platform. But the tools inside Microsoft 365 aren't for everyone, and there are very genuine reasons why third-party solutions are the best fit for specific businesses or across certain industries. 
In this case, you are probably either operating at a scale where solutions like additional graph indexing of your third-party data can make sense, or you need to think about how you can more intentionally integrate the edges between your external capabilities and your Microsoft 365 tenant. You may need to start thinking about Microsoft 365 Copilot as an employee in its own right, and in the same way we focus on providing access to the data and tools any other employee needs to do their job, we may need to think about what data Copilot needs and in what format in order to do its job. Perhaps you need a secondary store of some of your information in Dataverse, or you need to make sure you automatically pull back various information from third-party apps into Outlook calendars. At this stage, if I was starting some new integration project, I'd probably be very interested in what capabilities I have to pull key information from my third-party side into Microsoft 365 somewhere, simply to have the capacity to hedge my bets on how important Copilot's access to that data may be in the future. Between Power Automate, Power BI datasets, data flows into Dataverse, and various other tools, we have pretty robust options for moving around, manipulating, and storing data in our tenants. And with Graph Connectors, we have a tool, albeit a fairly expensive one, to allow Microsoft 365 to treat external data similarly to how it treats its own. It will be interesting to see if third-party business software providers react in a similar way to Copilot's data needs as platforms like Twitter have reacted to the general data needs for training LLMs like GPT-4, in that they want to lock down and further monetize data access. Microsoft is already doing this with its own APIs, albeit for different reasons, but I can certainly see a scenario where keeping a competitor's AI eyes off of your data becomes a priority for smaller software vendors as they struggle to compete with the likes of Microsoft and Google more aggressively using data to add value on their own platforms. The argument right now from content creating platforms is that if services like Bing Chat summarize a bunch of news articles, then those eyes never turn into traffic on their site. I think that probably business solutions are safer with that regard to be an insulated from that sort of argument, as we are generally used to paying the same per user license fee, whether the user ends up using the software every working hour or once each month. But if Copilot starts to eat into that by giving those every so often users the information they need without ever opening that third party app, and that results in subscription reductions, then all bets are off, as third parties seek out ways to battle Microsoft's renewed dominance while trying not to anger their customers too much. At the end of the day, we may have entered the age of AI, but even the most intelligent person working in a business, even if that intelligence is artificial, is only as good as the data they have available to them. In the background, while the tech giants publicly battle to have their AI tools be the winners, I suspect there's going to be a much more subtle battle going on in the background to capture as much data as possible that we use to do business. What do you think? Drop your ideas down in the comments on how the apps you use and where your data resides may impact your Microsoft 365 Copilot experience. Is this something you're concerned about as a user of third-party apps, or are you currently 100% invested in Microsoft 365 so you feel all set? I'm excited to start using these products and to get more information about them, and I'll keep updating as I get more information on this topic. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.